Well, welcome everybody, and thank you for tuning in to this important discussion on vaccines as COVID-19 vaccines become available in the United States and now increasingly around the world as well. I'm Cathy Kay. I am the anchor for BBC World News America, and I'll be moderating this conversation. I am uh, grateful and privileged to be joined by an esteemed group of healthcare experts. They know firsthand how important it is that people have access to the latest and most accurate information as this vaccine starts to roll out across the country. Let me introduce my guests, starting with Dr. Leon McDougall, president of the National Medical Association. Leon, thank you for joining us. Dr. Jewel Mullen, She's Associate Dean for Health Equity at the University of Texas Dell Medical School. Jewel, thank you so, so much for being here with us today. Elizabeth Subcheck is Director of Strategic Alliances at the Geront Gerontological, I knew I would mess that up, Gerontological Society of America. Elizabeth, thank you as well for being here. And Susan Winkler is the CEO of the Reagan Udall Foundation for the Food and Drug Administration. Susan, thank you for giving us your time today. And Professor Carlos Del Rio um, is also with us. Carlos, we spoke uh, as well briefly before this conversation, so I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. You have so much information on the latest on vaccines as well. Uh, let me start with uh, kind of the newsy issues of where we are right now and ask each of you, as this vaccine starts to be rolled out across the United States, in the UK and in Europe, what has surprised you most uh, about this process? And Jewel, maybe I could start with you. I've actually uh, been surprised and happily so about the enthusiasm for the vaccine. Because as much as we talk about our concerns that some people won't want to get it right away, I think some of that actually reflects that uh, they're just watching and waiting what's gonna happen. But in general, uh, I've been talking to people who are so eager to get it. And the question becomes, when is my turn? And that means we have a lot to do to keep people on board until it is their turn. That, that's so interesting because we're also going to talk about people's skepticism, vaccine skepticism during the course of this conversation, but it's good to hear that you're hearing that people are enthusiastic. Susan, what surprised you? I've been surprised and impressed by the collaboration. So the working together of industry, of scientists in academia, working with the FDA and with other entities in government, that uh, um, willingness to share information so that everyone can move more quickly by learning from what others have done. And has that been global as well, Susan, or are you talking about just scientists in the US? So I would say scientists in the US and global as well, that we're just sharing information in an, un, in, in an unusual way and one that I hope will continue after the pandemic that will understand that sharing scientific understanding helps us all move together more quickly. I, I have heard that that is true. And I know that this is a fantastically competitive field. So it has struck some people as, as one of the high, the high points of this year that people have shared as much as they have. Uh, Leon. Uh, yes, uh, great question. I would say I'm surprised about how uh, visionary Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was in his book, uh, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? And he spoke to the pillars of the Black community, that being the Black church, uh, Black press, Black fraternities and sororities, and Black professional organizations. And how in my role as president of the National Medical Association, I'm uh, working with all of those groups to speak to this time. So that's my comment. Well, a lot has been said, and I agree. I think the, you know, in a year that we have had a lot of failures in addressing this pandemic, I think a success has been the scientific collaboration and the way in which uh, it's not just in vaccines, it's in many other things, and, but the way scientists across the world and, and, and scientists, government, industry, and community have worked together. I mean, the, the way that this clinical trials to approve the vaccine have been able to enroll so quickly, it's because there was a lot of interest in the community and there was a lot of support 
and there was a lot of a lot of things were facilitated. So I think we've learned a lot about how to better do clinical trials. I can tell you those of us that are that have been doing HIV research for a while are not surprised. HIV has we are with, where we are in HIV care and in treatment for HIV because of the partnership of industry, community, uh, 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 scientists, uh, governments, and particularly the people living with HIV and the people at risk of HIV. So I hope that this influences the way we do research in general, not just in the circumstances. We have about 10 minutes left, uh, slightly under, and there are quite a lot of questions that are very specific medical questions about the vaccine. And I want to raise them because I think they will help get to this idea of safety and trust in the vaccine. Let's start with Scott, um, who has sent in this video from the Liver Coalition of San Diego. Hi, my name is Scott Succo with the Liver Coalition of San Diego from California. My question is for those living with a liver disease, whether it be an autoimmune disease like autoimmune hepatitis, or if you've had a liver transplant um, and are on autoimmune suppressants, how might being vaccinated uh, impact you and what would you tell patients um, with a liver disease? Does anyone have any information on that? You know, again, I would tell you as a clinical trialist, a lot of the people we enroll in clinical trials had, those that would have excluded somebody from participating in a clinical trial. And therefore, a lot of the people that, the questions that are coming right now is, how about this patient that has liver disease? How about this patient that is receiving chemotherapy? How about this person that is on, you know, on a, in a, a you know, a TNF alpha, alpha inhibitor? All those individuals would have been excluded from a clinical trial, so we don't have information. But we will when we start vaccinating. We will when we do what we call phase four studies, which is exactly looking at, you know, at, at what happens at the community level and once you start rolling out a process. And that's why the research doesn't stop with the phase three. You really move into this phase four because research in phase three is about efficacy. Research in phase four is about effectiveness. We want to see the effectiveness. So a lot of times right now we have to tell people we don't know. But after a conversation with an individual, I may say, but it's in, best, in your best interest to get vaccinated right now because of the following things. I can tell you, for example, HIV individuals are saying, well, what about HIV? Patients of mine living with HIV, I say, look, your HIV is controlled, you're an antiretroviral therapy, you're doing fine, you will be fine enrolling. But if I have somebody with newly diagnosed HIV on a CD4 count of five, you know, who has capsid sarcoma, I may say, no, let's get your immune system up and running and then we'll vaccinate you. So every individual is gonna be different. And that's why we as, 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 as healthcare providers have to really look at at every situation and decide what's best for the patient in that situation. Still a lot still to learn, but I hope that we have managed to clarify during the course of this uh, discussion, some of your questions, some of your concerns, um, and, and to set the record straight on what we know and what we don't know. And thank you all for being so honest about what we don't know, because I think actually that is the very important part of building the trust. When we can say honestly, we don't know yet, uh, for example, the impact on liver disease. Uh, I think that helps people realize that when we do say something, they can trust what we do know. Eliz Elizabeth Subcheck, Jewel Mullen, uh, Susan Winkler, Leon McDougall, Carlos Del Rey, thank you, Del Rio, thank you very much uh, for joining this discussion. For more information, do stay tuned to Partnership for Infectious Disease and Vaccination by visiting www.fightinfectiousdisease.org vaccines and information go hand in hand. So let's continue to ask those questions and share knowledge with one another. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and do let's work together to put an end to this pandemic. <laughs>